Um, so a, a few different options. Um, on the communication only side, um, Slack, which is really well known um, in, in political organizing and Flock are similar systems. Um, they are chat-based communication systems um, with some project management stuff like calendars and Flock does have a nice to-dos setting. Um, but think of this as like a message board thread or a series of Facebook chats or group texts um, where you have you know, all of these uh, channels and one will be for you know, senior level campaign people, one will be for the fundraising team, one will be for ballot access, one will be for events coordination, one will be for volunteers or for volunteer coordinators, and then one will be for the volunteers to communicate with each other. Um, you can set and segregate who's where, who's involved in what conversations in a clear way. Um, you can link to to-dos or docs in there. Um, both Flock and Slack, I mentioned them primarily because for campaigns, they can be used for free. Um, there are limitations in kind of what um, features you get access to for free. Um, for example, I, the plot has video calling, but you can only video call one on one for free. If you want to have a group like a Zoom, then you need to pay, then you'll end up paying. Um, the big thing with Flock and Slack and their free versions is both of them stop, both of them allow you to save an archive of 10,000 messages, which seems like a lot. Um, when you tweet or when message 10,001 gets sent, message number one gets deleted. When message 10,002 gets sent, message number two gets deleted. So as you keep going through your campaign, you'll lose the archive of past conversations. For political campaigns, that might not be such a big deal. Um, for political parties, that's a big deal. Um, political parties tend to really want access to minutes and past conversations for, because unlike campaigns, they continue, right? The Green Party of Illinois has been around since 1990. We've been around for 30 years. Um, we obviously would be incredibly limited if we only had 10,000 messages um, as, as an archive of our history. Um, and 10,000 messages sounds like a lot. We started on Flock when the Hawkins Walker campaign launched in its exploratory phase, we reached 10,000 messages in less than two weeks. Because, and it's a national campaign with a whole bunch of stuff going on, right? So there's a lot of conversation and a local campaign may never reach 10,000. But what if your campaign really gets moving, if you have a, a campaign team that develops some camaraderie, right? How, a thousand of those messages could be gift parties. Could you could be you guys joking around or complaining about something that doesn't have anything to do with work, but is building you you know you as a core team. Um, so that's a big limitation. Um, the other big downside with Flock, Slack and Flock is if you want to get away from those free limitations, you have to start paying per user and then per month, and so. It gets, you know, it starts with really small numbers, like $4 or $7 a user. You're like, okay, oh, that's, that's not that bad. But at $4 a user, 25 users, which is a moderate-sized campaign team probably, is costing you $100 a month. That's expensive for a grassroots campaign. That's nothing for a mainstream political campaign, right? That's why you'll, you know, you'll see... Democratic campaigns or Republican campaigns using these systems because they can just throw the money at it. It doesn't matter. So the larger your team gets, the more it costs. Um, and the reason that we moved away from Flock was because we hit a point where paying for a system that's on the next slide became cheaper. Even though it was more upfront cost, it became cheaper over time um, once we started adding users. Another option in this kind of communications area is Discord. Um, it's a chat and collaboration system. It allows users to add groups um, where they can communicate, share documents, just like the channels on Flock or Slack. 
you can have different groups for different topics for different areas of your campaign. Um, it's free. It also has public spaces. So in that operate as social media. So in theory, you could find progressive space, progressive public spaces in Discord and onboard people into your campaign Discord from there. Um, the Green Party has an unofficial Discord, things like that. Um, Discord is very popular in the coding and gaming communities. Um, coding in particular because of the ability to collaborate on documents, right? You could write your code, you could post it into the Discord, your team members could see it, and they could edit it if they needed to. Um, so those are kind of communication-centric um, options, to, you know, alternatives to email. 